Hey everybody and welcome to Quest for Pixels Conversations, the podcast for cucks, made by cucks. Oh, oh wait, sorry, that was that's a different podcast. Hey, no, different we're podcast simps. on a different night. It's a podcast for simps, made by simps. Welcome to the Simpcast. <laughs> Simpcast. But today uh, we're coming live with season four, not season three, season four, that's right. And I am joined by my two good buddies, back together again, Mr. Joel Brooks. What up? And Mr. Sheldon Benedict. Hooray, summer's over and I can play games again. (laughs) Hooray! (laughs) It has been a summer and it's starting to get cold, so that means it's time for a new season of Quest for Pixels, Conversations. Not my, uh, you know what Daddy Likes podcast. That's a different 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 show. Guys, what have you been up to? What have we been doing? Well, now that we don't have stuff going on every single week of days off, I have been kind of playing stuff all over the place. Um, I listened to... I was watching Internet Historian. I saw he had a video about uh, No Man's Sky, like how how they redeem themselves or whatever. Uh So I sort of got interested in that, and... This week I jumped back into that game, so I've been playing that quite a bit, and uh, I got I've been working on Animal Crossing some too. Mm-hmm. I finished all my fossils, and today me, Jess, and Jason played Mario Party all day long. So feels good to play games. <laughs> it does feel good to play games. What about you, Joel? Have you been playing anything special lately? I don't know about special. <laughs> Just playing. Have you playing anything? Yeah, no, I'm just, you know, Fortnite, got some Modern Warfare in there, there's some Tony Hawk Pro Skater, you know, just keeping it very simp. <laughs> simple. <laughs> yeah, it's it's simple. Simple. Yeah, simple. <laughs> That's good. Uh, I also have been just playing uh, the basics with you mostly, Joel, and we've been playing a lot of Fortnite oh, lately, yeah, Sheldon jumping in. Um, and yeah, that's been pretty much all that we've been playing. But uh, as the summer winds down, we're getting a lot of excitement with uh, next-gen consoles. A lot of things have happened. Xbox has came out and announced their price and date. Does anybody have any thoughts about that? I mean, you couldn't get the price much more perfect than zero. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> like, they're pretty much giving you the console. It's like, hey, can you spend ten more dollars a month on top of what you're already paying for your Game Pass Unlimited, oh, then you can get an X-Gen console. Yeah, and you're talking about all access. Yeah, and it's like, like the comparisons they were talking about the other day is that people are like, oh, well, the teraflops. And they're like, well, you can't compare next-gen consoles to current-gen consoles, right? Like, they're saying that the Series S is like, what say, like five, ten times faster than the One X? Like, that yeah. help. like it's just crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. It comes in uh, just because of the next gen features alone, it makes it pretty powerful. And I've seen heard some rumblings. I don't know if it's true or not. It could be misinformation, but I've heard some people saying that it might end up being more powerful than the PlayStation Five, even at the two ninety nine price point of the Series S. Yeah, that's crazy. And then on top of that, like uh, the other big news that we heard this week was the EA was EA all EA access is now going to be EA plays, and that's going to be included in your Game Pass Ultimate subscription. Yep. That's that's a crazy value. It was funny because I was talking to my daughter. We were in Walmart the other day. And she's like, "Oh, can we get the Sims?" I'm like, "No, we're not getting the Sims." I'm like, well, how come we can't get the Sims? I'm like, because it's coming to Game Pass uh, Ultimate in like two months. Yeah. So we could play The Sims then. So it's funny because a lot of these games that they're coming in from these different services are actually starting to like really uh, spark the interest in in like the kids now, which I'm mm-hmm. really liking. Man, I was so close to just giving up on next gen altogether, and because uh, we took so long to hear the price, so long to hear anything about it. They were both Sony and Microsoft are so quiet. And then just like that, man, you hear like two ninety nine USD for the S, four ninety nine for the Series X. Like, oh man, what a what a great value proposition bundled in with Game Pass, and that's going to include uh, X Cloud as well as included in that. So like, you can't go wrong with that. 
Like no, because... usually when I play when you when you get a new console, like this happened to me last year or um, last generation on launch day, got both consoles and there was nothing for me to play. I played Call of Duty Ghosts. That's a, that's it, and that was not a very good Call of Duty. And uh, yeah, like I'm gonna have a whole back catalog to go through of Game Pass and just be like, oh, how do these games look on here now? Like how do these games run better? Yeah, like my day. So, <clears throat> for what what is your day one of Series X or S gonna look like for you? Like, I know for sure I'm gonna be playing some Forza Horizon Four uh-huh. because it's getting an upscale to next gen, and then I'm gonna wait a couple days and I'm gonna play Call of Duty Cold War, and then we're also getting uh, Destiny Two, that 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 new expansion. Yeah for destiny 2 on game pass that's so it's like, a, that's a good deal like i think the fact that that one's gonna be on game pass it's gonna pick up a lot because it's a great game i i really like destiny but you know it was one of those things where you bought the 60 dollar game and then there was 30 dollar dlc so uh-huh. i don't i think that there wasn't a lot of people that jumped into it but yeah because there was a what like two boxing days ago they had destiny 2 on sale Mm -hmm. i remember i picked it up on boxing day at eb games and that's when they were coming out with the second dlc pack and there was a here's a deal if you bought it you got the other ones and then they came out with that free version on their like destiny light or whatever it was called and uh it just didn't hit like it wasn't there, but I'm thinking this is the jump in point for me for Destiny. Yeah, it's perfect because you're gonna have that jump in point for so many people. Like that's the great thing about Game Pass is if a game launches on there, everyone's trying to check it out at the same time, and all those people have online, all those people are playing on Xbox or PC at the same time, and you can join in and play with them. So it's gonna be like those kind of games only speak to me when I have people to play them with and uh, having Game Pass being such an incredible value is just going to make it so much easier for everyone to jump in at the same time yeah. but not only is that with uh, even getting the uh, Xbox or Microsoft All Access whatever they're calling it uh, not only do you get the console we get Game Pass Ultimate but yeah. then it also lets you play on your PC yeah the PC is included with that which is dope Right, so really, if you want, you could play on your computer, jump back into your Series S, and everything is like saved on your Xbox account. Like it's all streamless. It's just amazing. Right, Sheldon, are you planning on getting one of these Xboxes come lunch launch day? I think so. Um, I don't know if I'll get it on launch day, but uh-huh. I mean, the price, you know, is kind of making it hard not to just go grab it. Yeah. But, well, yeah, if you get a Series S, you get... Mm-hmm. Like, I even thought about getting an X and an S <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> I don't even need that. But I'm like, that's a good price. I could probably get two. <laughs> well, because you figure here in Canada, it's going to be, three, what, 379 79 yeah. yeah. Right, Which that is, was pretty much the same price point as the Nintendo Switch was. Yeah, and funny yeah. thing about that is they're actually losing money on that because the conversion is not apples to apples there. So they're no. actually coming in less, which yeah. is nice. And which is crazy because you could be like, all right, so let's say right now it's advertising as like what two ninety nine a month for uh, the Series S on all access, right? So convert it to Canadian, you're adding probably another ten dollars on that, right? So you figure mm-hmm. for forty bucks a month, you're getting everything you need to play games and never have to buy a disc ever again. Yeah, that's gonna be. I don't know. It's gonna be nice to see. I'm I'm not a fan of the digital only, but really, yeah. I but I'm a weird collector. I like boxes, so that's that's uh-huh. that's the only thing that deters me from that. But with my kid, it's a lot easier just having. I mean, like on my Xbox, I pretty much just have everything downloaded anyway, because that yeah. way, when Jason, you know, I don't have to worry about discs getting lost and stuff like that. But the collector in me doesn't like it. Yeah, then you buy two copies, yeah. digital, and then keep one in the box. <laughs> it's sad how many times I've done that. And you know what? A lot of digital, uh, a lot of uh, collector's editions now are just throwing in the the code yep. digitally, so you get the, all the goodies, but then just the game is itself is just a code. Yeah. So that that's that's another way to combat that. But yeah, like for for me, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go Series X 
for the Xbox, and I'm going to go with the PlayStation Digital only for the PS5. That's what, my plan. What is the price point on the Series X? Four ninety nine. Four ninety nine. Yeah, same as what the Xbox launched at. Yeah. Um, initially, like the first generation of Xbox One. See, I think that's what I paid for my because I bought the One X, and I think that's that, what I paid yeah. for for that. That was also four ninety nine. Yep. So yeah, it's a good price. It's a good price. I, I'm very shocked they were able to keep it the same, because if you were to, you know, judge for inflation, you'd be up a couple bucks, and mm-hmm. it's it's more powerful, obviously, and more features. So. Well, and I think a big part of it is a lot of the, uh, you know, the the hardware is stuff that came out, you know, pretty much right after the launch of like the last generation. Mm-hmm. So it worked out in their, you know, in their favor because they can upgrade everything, but the price isn't, you know, extraordinarily larger than what they were at the last go around. That's sort of the same thing, like with the rumored Switch Pro. I mean, yeah. that that's got me wet in my pants. <laughs> I can't <laughs> wait for that. Yeah, I wonder when they're gonna when they're planning on that. You think early spring or same time as it launched, kind of? That That's what March, I think. End of March? I think it was supposed to be a 2020 Christmas thing. And I think that's why all the rumors are starting to you know, kind of slide out. But the coronavirus gone and fucked that up too. So now I think that they pushed it off, mainly because of the production rate issues. Like with all the, you know, like they haven't even been able to keep the Switch in stock. But I think it's going to be... A, a spring around the same time March you know like when the, the switch originally released yeah I'm gonna have to budget in for that as well <laughs> yes and that's like I was I don't know I wanted to get because I, I actually found a switch in stock for normal price and I was gonna buy it but then I was like god I just I just read the uh I think it was Bloomberg article about the few rumors that slipped out on the switch pro and I was like god I should just hold out but and if I don't buy a Switch, then I can get, like, the Xbox, and then I won't hurt as bad to get the Switch either. Yeah, that's true. But the Switch, the, you know, the rumors and stuff that came out about that, it, hopefully, I've got my hopes up a little bit. But Nintendo's been delivering pretty good the last couple of years. But, I mean, it's going to be an incredible little system. Mm-hmm. The only thing that, you know, I'm still not sure on is what they're going to do with the old switch model but i think it's like what you said the other night tony they're they'll just drop the original model keep the switch light on and then sell the switch pro that way they can still come in at 299 yeah well fuck. They're, they're gonna I, I really hope they don't plan on doing it more expensive now because yeah, in no. comparison it's not gonna look very good with the 299 xbox out there yeah, but like like we were talking the other night though, the Tegra X2 chip, the price on that has dropped dramatically since mm-hmm. the first Switch came out. So I think it's possible for them to come in at the same price. I definitely think so. Uh, so Wednesday, we got uh, news that the PlayStation show- Showcase is happening on Wednesday. They didn't say anything about price or hardware or anything, but they said it's going to be a showcase for games, but they got to announce the price at the end, right? Yeah. They have to. I don't know though, but they've been sticking to what they've been saying on their social media, right? Like the last event they told you exactly what they're gonna like exactly what they're gonna give you and that's what they gave you. They didn't give you no more, no less. Yeah, but the last oh, event I... they said like no hardware. This was left open where it's like, We're talking about games and then it just sent <laughs> that's it. Yeah, I don't know. I honestly like for the fanboy in me because I you know I love play I love all my video game boxes mm-hmm. I just hope they come out and do something because it's kind of like you're watching somebody getting beat like badly and you're like oh come on just you know come on get up right fight back or something yeah. you know give, give us show us that you want to be here so yeah. we'll, like we'll see I don't know I, I don't think it's going to happen on Wednesday I think it is I think at the very end they're going to announce that price and they're then that date <laughs> But who knows? They could they could really really put play the long game. <laughs> they don't they don't need to. They got a hundred million consoles out there right now of PS4s. Well, well, I'm telling if they don't if they don't give the price, like for me if they don't give the price on Wednesday, I'm thinking that they're not going to be able to match the price of the Xbox, and that's why they haven't said anything yet. They're also going to lose out on the pre-orders. Like people who have enough money to buy one console. 
if they don't have an, an, a date by the time the pre-orders go live for the Xbox or a price of the PS4 or, or sorry, it's the PS5, then they'll just use their money on the Xbox, right? So yeah. I, I would imagine it would have to, they'd have to announce it before, just just for the fact that those dollars, consumer dollars, will go elsewhere. Yeah, but not really though. When Xbox is offering all access, oh, that's true. That could be an easy way to get both for sure. Right, like I don't know, man. Like I, like I said last night in the Discord, I hope I hope Sony comes out swinging the big big blue dick all over the place and just freaking brings in that kind of energy because I I, I want to see something from him. Dude, you know what I heard actually is uh, Sony was thinking of selling like. They were saying that Sony was thinking of selling directly to customers for like the first time ever, where you'd pre-order through them directly. What if that means that they were also going to do an all-access type thing? Because they realized that maybe the generations are changing, and maybe in the next two years after your subscription runs out for your you know monthly payment, then you can easily upgrade to the Pro and then whatever, PS5 Pro or whatever. Yeah, start that and payment then, process all over again. And start again. that payment process all over again, and then you can... That, that would make a lot of sense, actually. Yeah, man, who knows? Because they're, they're also both phone makers. Like, they, they know how this process works. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. they've made phones. Sony makes tons of phones. Yeah, but that they, experience is pretty sick. It is. So the PlayStation is supposed to come out this fall, too, isn't it? Yeah, they're going to come out, like days between each other yeah. maybe week i'm thinking be, like i think because uh with the launch of call of duty i think call of duty is going to launch after the launch of the playstation 5 I, but i think it will be in the same week so i'm thinking that it's going to be the same week that call of duty comes out yeah and the last generation for ps4 came out in, on november 15th and the xbox was right after that i think i don't remember which one i got first second right here uh, launch date November 22nd yeah it was a week after yeah because what Call of Duty comes out November 17th mm -hmm. something like that yes oh man are you are you like Sheldon have you seen any of that Call of Duty Black Ops I have information oh, yeah, I long. need I need to go look at that dude okay all you need to do is go to the Call of Duty like uh, YouTube page yeah they have a four-hour uh, video on there Jesus. of the entire uh, launch event. Dude, like, it looks so amazing. Like, zombies looks awesome. See, what the I'm hoping for? I'm hoping that Nintendo will release the Pro and Activision will pull their heads out of their asses and put Call of Duty back on a Nintendo system. I don't know. I, will, I would love to have that. I mean... Well, I didn't get, get it crazy because here, Sheldon. <laughs> well, uh, Black Ops Two it did relatively well. I mean, on the the Wii U, I can, you know, comparing it to the Wii U sales themselves, I mean, it was a pretty dude, good attachment rate on it. Dude, I just played Black uh, Black Ops on the DS. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, oh, come on. No. So. Black Ops Cold War releases on November thirteenth, and yeah. that's very that's very interesting because I heard the date November thirteenth thrown around for the PS five launch. Could you imagine just like launch at the same day? That'd be crazy. Well, they they do have those partnerships there, right? Like they're obviously well, getting that, the beta yeah. first. They get the beta at least a week before us. Exactly. So like launching it on the day with that, oh my god, it's gonna be so hype. There's no November promotional 10th. deal with it. Like it's only gonna be on one console at the beginning, is there? I nope. wouldn't imagine it's, they do that. No. no. It's gonna be on PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Series S. So or it's the only exclusive day. like early access stuff that they get is the beta. Mm -hmm. So they'll get the a beta for the PlayStation first. But it's October then October 8th, I believe. Yeah, and then the weekend after it'll be then it will be PlayStation, Xbox, and then I believe after that it's cross play. Yeah. Yeah, so if you pre-order, you gain access to those betas. Yeah. And then you only get access to so you get three three betas if you're with the PlayStation and you only get two betas if you're with like Xbox or PC. It's exciting stuff. Like, Warzone looks good. 
like even the the maps that they showed off for multiplayer, like the Miami map was pretty dope. Yeah. That that one that was like it's called satellite, where it's like in the middle of a desert and the satellite went down. Uh, even to that big like one where you're fighting between the two battle like two like uh, aircraft carriers, like that looks crazy. Being able to like cruise around on that boat with a 50 caliber machine gun on the back, so like you're cruising. And it looks so and good. Buddies on the back just blasting away. And that was just uh, like I don't even. Did they say that the game? Yeah, I think the game was, was shown off on PlayStation Five, wasn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. right. It was on the PS Five. So it's gonna look better on the Series S or X. Yeah, depending on how that goes. <sighs> but yeah, it it looks so good. And the trailer they played for it, Sheldon, is such a dope trailer. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, I'm gonna go check that out after we finish the it's podcast. Got, <laughs> the music in it is by Duran Duran and Vicky Smalls. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, and right now we'll take a minute to uh, jump in with Grouchy Surge and his thoughts on the Backlog Minute. Yeehaw, everybody! It's Grouchy Surge, and this is the Backlog Minute. And you know what the best part about this time of year, this time of the millennium, this time is new systems coming out. PS5, Xbox Series 1, S and X and S and M and... Uh, Spaniards and Mexicans. I don't know, man. All type of crazy stuff is happening. Finally, though, we have prices. Prices leaked. Xbox confirmed. They have a system coming out at $299 next gen. Play all your stuff. Do all your game passes. Google till your hearts fall out of your chest cavities. $299 for a next gen console. It rivals the dock switch. That is crazy, crazy, crazy. So, uh, yeah, the Series S, $299. The Series X, $499. We need PlayStation prices to drop now. I need to see what they are. I need to pre-order all the things. Wow, the Series S looks amazing and tiny and cute. I got to go for the X. I need the flops and the Terras and the bits and the megas. I need it all. I've been going on for almost a minute and a half. I am Grouchy Surge. This is the Backlog Minute. Next time, PS5 hype. Boy! And we're back. Thanks, Grouchy. I completely agree or disagree with whatever you just said. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, now we're back with uh, Quest for Pixels Season 4. Uh, I don't know. I don't think we're going to really talk too much about anything else here. I think we should just wrap it up, keep it tight for the first little podcast. Ooh, we have uh, one other thing we got to quickly touch on. The Mario 35th anniversary. I mean, the, if you haven't watched that direct, you need to because they blew me out of the water. There's so much cool shit coming out. And Jason saw, saw on the Switch, the news thing, there was the Mario Kart oh, yeah. tour. Live. Whatever, live. And he saw that, and we're, we're definitely going to pick that up. That's freaking sweet. I'm just worried that I don't have enough room in my house. <laughs> yeah, but, seems like a common thing people are thinking about. <laughs> but between that one and uh, the new Mario 3D All-Stars... With, Which comes out in, like, five days. Comes out on yeah. Friday. And I, got the, I got the physical version of that. You did too, didn't you, Tony? Yeah. yeah. Did you get that, Joel? No, I'm hard passing on that. Really? That's Dude, a hard pass. Fucking uh, Mario Sunshine in HD. Yeah, do, but it still plays the exact same. They put zero, like literally, they put zero effort into remastering the game. It's like Plus, literally the same game they put on the GameCube. Well, that's fine. Mario Sunshine was amazing, except for the pachinko level. Other than that, the whole game is amazing. Oh, no, man. <laughs> but, yeah, oh and you can play, and you can play Mario Galaxy with no fucking motion controls. That excites me. Yes, 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 you can. You don't have to use oh. the waggle. But dude, how is that controller. gonna work with the star bits? How is that gonna work? Like, shake how do you the controller, do the star bits without? I mean, I'd rather just shake control. the controller. But how are you gonna aim it? Because you gotta aim those to shoot them at stuff. The thumbstick. No, with the when you're playing. Either that, or you'll have to hold like L and then aim with it. When you're playing in handheld, you can touch the screen. To collect the uh, star bits, and when you're playing in um, in docked mode, you can use the Joy-Con as a pointer. But you don't have to, though. It said so. I don't know what the other option is. But uh, to make Mario do his little spin, you used to have to shake the the, the nunchuck. 
now you can press Y. And with the Pro Controller, you can still aim, I mean, like a Joy-Con. Yeah. So... I'm just. I, I can't wait to see everybody who's played Mario Galaxy start to complain after they play it with no waggle controls because <laughs> that game was pretty well perfect on the Wii. I'm not gonna lie. It was that good, was, but I'm excited to play it with a, just a regular Pro Control, just regular 3D Mario. Like it's I'm funny. just sad they never put any of the Nintendo love into those franchises to make them better for the collection. You know. Yeah. Like, kind of like how they did with, like, Mario, the original Mario All Stars, right? Like, they gave every game the Super Mario, like, oh, yeah, the... overhaul for it, right? Yeah. So, See, I, I don't like, know. I have a controversial opinion on, on Super Mario All Stars, like, for the Super Nintendo. Like, I don't, I, if those are good and they look good, but when they I play them, it doesn't feel right. And I'd rather just play the original versions of them. <laughs> Which the is best so thing, weird to me. The best thing about the original All Stars was the um, the lost levels. That was really cool to have. That was a good one. See, they should yeah. have added something like that. See, I had the but... cartridge that was the Super Mario All Star Cross plus Super plus Mario. Super Mario. Oh, yeah. that one's such a good one. That's such a great value. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine, like, just like they started the whole remasters? Yeah. yeah. Like, really. But I'm telling you, I am excited for that new 3D world. Yeah. Oh man, that looks that so one good. has me excited. Yeah. I'm not getting the physical, but I'll get that digital. Mm-hmm. But it was just nice to see Nintendo came around for the 35th anniversary. I I'm I'm glad they did more than like what they did. Yeah. I mean the last go around. So. Dude, how does that Game and Watch look? That looks freaking so good. sweet. I can't wait to see people starting to hack that. Yeah, like a Raspberry <laughs> Pi. That's what you were talking about, Tony. Just put yeah. in a whole NES console on there i want to make my game boy mini yes <laughs> put all the game boy games on there <laughs> but you know what I th- the look of it looks like it would be more comfortable to play than a game boy mm-hmm. yeah yeah just better layout but... you know what's funny is for the super mario all-star 3d is that uh for me with like mario 64 never really was big on that uh sunshine is the one i'm excited the most to play because that's the one I liked the best, mm-hmm. and Galaxy was the same thing. Like I was like, yeah, it's good, but it wasn't really for me. Honestly, like I'm more of a 2D Mario guy any day of the week. Right? Oh yeah, I prefer 2Ds over the 3D Marios. But, but I played 64 on the you know the Nintendo 64, but I never, I don't think I never, I, re- I, I, I never, never beat it. it. But I got it on. It was like. Me, I think it was one of the first games I got on my DS when they did the, when they changed it to put it on the DS, and I beat that game twice. I think I played through it because I just never had, so I wanted to. I don't mind 64, but I much prefer Sunshine. Yeah, I'm excited to give Galaxy another try too. Yeah. But, but yeah, anything cool. else that we want to talk about today, or is that that about it? I think that's it. Nice. Good, man. Well, it's been great uh, chatting with you bros again, and I'm glad that we are starting off Season 4 with a bang and a smash. (laughs) All right. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you all next time. Boy. Later. Later, skaters.